Good afternoon, members of Spiritually Encrypted Encounters. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Uh, making a uh, afternoon spiritual life feed talk. Uh, I'm going to see if I can send a couple of invites where I would like to join. I'm going to send a couple out. Uh, How you doing, Sister Asta? How you doing this afternoon? As for me, I'm doing well. Uh, you're probably still working. Just, I'm just making this uh, live feed. Just to talk spiritual. Whoever is going to view this video later on, I know it's early. Uh, but this is the time I felt uh, I need to do the video. Yes. I'm, I'm hanging in there myself, sister. Uh, I was working through an injury on my left shoulder. It's been hurting for a while, uh, for about, i say like a month or even longer than that. But I try not to think about it too much. Uh, I cut down on my workout some, but I still manage, I still do workouts. Not as much as I, as I was doing, but I'm doing workouts just to, to work through the injury that I have here, um, I'm, as I've let it healed, uh, I'm picking up the pace back up to where I was working out. It just, I'm gradually moving myself back up, uh, to that. So cleaning the kitchen, I see. Yeah, so the, that's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I work out every day, every after, I, I, I find a way to work out, you know. And that's what, what it is. I find a way to work out. Sometimes I work out in the morning. Sometimes I work out in the afternoon, like midday, or sometimes I work out late in the afternoon, but I, I, I find a way to do the workout, uh, to, to continue to stay thinking positive, you know, because to me, the workout regiment has been part of my life, uh, for a very long time since I was a teenager. I uh, would always work out. There was times where uh, I felt sad or I felt upset about something, you know, when you're a teenager. Uh, and, and I was going through a lot, you know, when I lost my mother. So one of the things that I would do when when negative thoughts would come to my mind is I would turn that negative into a positive. So since I was 15 years old, I've been working out since I've been 15 years old, turning the negative into positive. Uh, you know, when you're younger, you don't know spiritually what we're capable of doing, you know, uh, which if I would have been getting negative thoughts coming into my mind when it was that, that young, uh, that if I knew I had the ability to say, I tie by and rebuke you, leave me alone, I would have done that. But when there's vengeance, in your mind and your heart, uh, it's hard to to break off that the negative attachment, right? Especially if you lost a a family member, you know, through through domestic violence. How you doing, Sister Joanne? How you doing, Sister Dawn? And 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 that's one of the things that happens. It will happen to me, you know. Uh, that's why I want to I want to talk to y'all today. When I was young, you know, all these negative thoughts would come to mind and I could see images and pictures of, of what I was going to do to, I guess, I would consider the enemy, you know, in terms of consider the enemy. Uh, when vengeance is not good because vengeance, when you, if you have vengeance in your mind, 
it, it's that's a big opening because that's unforgiveness and where where there's vengeance there's thoughts right and some of the thoughts that come through vengeance is not good the pictures of the images is kind of like pre-planning right because when you're being shown something that you're going to do something a certain way that is not good and those images are not good through vengeance which is is is, is all negativity you know and that's what uh you know dealing with the balance that's what the negativity wants it wants you to have hatred it wants you to have anger yeah i know this you know like i'll give you examples of that you know people that are living in the past you know if i was living in the if i was let's talk about living in the past if i was living in the past right now i go to the moment of the time that i lost my mother's domestic violence right and I'll still be living and thinking that way right now, but I don't because I knew that that was bringing me down and the feeling of having a a black heart where you wasn't feeling no love, you wasn't giving no love, you wasn't showing no love to nobody because there was just vengeance and hatred in your heart that you didn't know how to show it and you didn't know how to receive it. And those people around trying to show you love you didn't know how to receive it well in that in that in that kind of way you know if i were to take myself if i was living with hatred or anger or vengeance it would go to that moment when i lost a, a loved one uh, at the same time there's many people right now that are living that way if you think about it because i remember the past but i don't dwell on it because i know that having anger, hatred, or vengeance, or some kind of sore because of something bad that happened a long time ago is not good. It's called a negative attachment. There's people right now that still live that way. They think they have the mentality, and they're allowing things to happen centuries ago or decades ago, you know, uh, still control them right now because acts, a negative act is not good, right? A negative act, any kind of negative act. So you got people right now that I know of that still living in the times of slavery. And even though they did not go through the slavery, they focus on that and target on that, target on that. And they're living as if in some kind of way they feel anger, they have hatred, they have vengeance because they're living at the moment in the past. But I understand, you know, how that feels, even though they didn't go through it. When I lost my mother through domestic violence, I lived the moment. I, I was there. But there's people that haven't even gone through nothing like that. And they choose to leave something in the past and focus on that. And that's how they, do, they build their foundation right now. Uh, dealing with something that happened a long time ago. And that's not good. Uh, and the reason I say it's not good is because it's an opening. It's an opening to an open invitation to negativity. Uh, that's why I don't dwell in the past. It, it, I don't dwell in the past. I leave it alone. Uh, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna get spiritually attacked. Uh, where in my dreams, you know, things of the past surface up like if it was yesterday, you know, and I find it spiritually within my dreams. Uh, at times, you know, when I do the try to do the spiritual works here on uh, spiritual cryptid encounters, and you know, and I share my videos, so, so, sometimes I target it spiritually. By members or people that are here right now, not not saying that it's the members that are good peoples, but these people that are infiltrate the site to to come in in a in a negative way, you know, whether they say, "Well, I, I don't see nothing there." You have like six, seven people that are seeing what you're putting putting out there, and there's like one person that's like that you barely add to the group. They haven't even been in the group two, three hours, and they want to say something negative, you know. And they have only one profile picture. So what I do with those people, you know, I consider them infiltrators, trolls. So what I do, I just kick them out because I don't, I'm not, I don't got time to play in games with somebody that has only one profile picture that might not even be a real person or it's a, a fraudulent person, you know, somebody else just infiltrating to, to try to go against what I'm saying, in which, you know, I just, I just boot them out. I don't got time for that. You know, just like, but it's also about res respect, you know, respecting the members. You know, I know everybody comes from a different background, 
and everybody's got their own beliefs and that's understandable but you know i'm here to protect the group you know i'm here to, uh, for everybody this year sister aska sister don you know i've been knowing y'all for a very long time and you were there for me especially uh you were there uh for me sister don and uh Sister Asuka was there uh, for me when I was going through the spiritual battle in Elms Grove. She was young, but she was like there, you know, like we were literally talk through through Messenger and she was there and she would see the things that I was going through. So she know that there's something was happening there. I just, I don't know exactly what she's seen uh, through her, her views, but I was literally getting spiritual attack physically and spiritual there in Elms Grove, in which uh, there was a lot of chaos. A lot of chaos happening around me, uh, 24-7, till I got finally, you know, departed my ways from Elms Grove. But it was pretty pretty hectic and pretty bad uh, there. But I'm not the same person I was then, because it doesn't, doesn't matter how many times you you fall or you falter, or you get spiritually tested is how many times you're gonna gonna fight spiritually how many times you're gonna continue to maintain your faith how many times you're gonna continue to overcome the enemy and and continue to do the good works that's what it is about and that's why i got this site you know uh yes uh, uh Sister Dawn, I know there there's some some spiritual activity have, but I know uh, at, at 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 times you know like the internet is kind of kind of freaked out, so I don't try to focus on that. You know, I, I've already did my little prayer for the day. Uh, I'm not upset in any kind of way. I'm just I'm just talking, you know. But uh, sis, Sister Aska knows, you know. There's not a day that goes by, and I, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Right now, there's not a day that goes by that that location where I used to live. It's always draws me that way. It wants me to go. It feels like I have unfinished spiritual business there. There's not a time that I meet a person that says, "Hey, take me to this location." Uh, the, I've met many people throughout the past two weeks that want me to take them to the location, but they don't understand that it's not about seeing a ghost or an apparition or seeing something that might be demonic or seeing something that might shape you to a certain, it's not about that. What I don't understand is that those forces that are out there, and, and this force isn't just there in Elms Grove. This, this forces are everywhere that they're just out to find a host, you know, and, and, and that's one of the reasons I kind of hesitate to take people there, you know, uh, because I don't want nothing to happen to nobody, you know. Uh, like I said, Sister Aska knows. She's if, if, if somebody knows, because she she got when I met Sister Aska, it was in the midst, I believe, in the middle of all the the spiritual warfare I was going through, uh, and she knows because uh, she remembers seeing me in that state of mind, how I was getting spiritually attacked and. My demeanor changed. I think I got a couple of pictures. As a matter of fact, at the do, at the, or do this life video, they're old pictures. I'm, I'm going to place the old pictures that I have of myself when I was being spiritually attacked by the Elsie Force. You know, I, I'm surprised that Sister Ashka even remained as my friend as, as much as, 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 as I was, as, you know, how should I say? Just put it this way. When you're in spiritual warfare, your guards are up, you're a certain way, and it's like, when you're going to be spiritually attacked, you can come from any, from any direction. What I mean by that, you can uh, be attacked spiritually, you can be attacked spiritually, uh, physically. So you have to be prepared at all times, so your guards are always up spiritually. Uh, and that's how I was uh, in Elms Grove. When I was there, and when I, when I was talking to Sister Ashka, uh, and sometimes when you're you're going through something like that, people won't understand what you're going through. So you kind of have to distance yourself away from individuals because you don't want to, how should I say, get nobody involved in what you're going through. Uh, at the same time, you know, I know there's people that are good, that, that, that are willing to help when you're going through something and they will be there 
to fight by you spiritually side by side. But at that time, when it was happening to me and I was secluded to that area because I really wouldn't go nowhere. So I was just secluded to Elms Grove. It was something that I had to go through because anybody that lived out of the area from Elms Grove would be kind of like uh, uh, a newcomer, or should I say, somebody that doesn't know what's going on in the area, so they wouldn't understand. It would only the only people that would be able to understand is the people that live there that knows exactly what was going on. So uh, you know, I had to distance myself uh, from that area. You know, I, I still. It doesn't matter. It's like I can pass through there through the highway and take pictures of the woods and I always catch imagery, you know, because I know what's in that location. Uh, because like I said, I've lived there for 15 years and so many witnesses that are, that are popping up that said that they used to live in the area that they were going through, through things when they were living there, that they, they felt they were being spiritually attacked or the, some people said that they were haunt there. Same difference, you know, when they're hot, you're being spiritually infiltrated. So, yes, it's pretty hot and heavy in that area. But that's kind of everywhere, you know. Uh, when you're doing the good works, the good deeds. You know, like me, I, I'm talking, I'm, I might be talking about the past, but I'm still maintaining my love foundation. I'm just talking freely to whoever's going to view this video later on. I'm talking freely about this, you know. And sometimes people don't have the spiritual gifts of discernment. What I mean by that, you know, there's people that, that, that see the things that are placed on the pictures, and there's some people that don't see it, you know, and they want to say something negative when they don't see it because whether they don't have this, uh, they might, they don't have the, the, the spiritual gift of discernment or they might be bonded in some kind of way that they can't see spiritually. You know, I'm sorry, you know, that you cannot view or you can't see what other people are seeing, uh, because you're, you're, your your senses are being blocked. They're being blocked by what people call the third eye or spiritually. They're being blocked spiritually, so you won't be able to see, you won't be able to hear uh, what's around you spiritually. So that's why you cannot see. Uh, when I'm trying to show something, you, if you notice, there's comments where people are seeing what's there, and then somebody will come up and say, well, I don't see nothing, you know, I don't know what you're trying to show, take a better picture, you know. That's what those, when people say, there's some people that say that, that's when the people are just living in the flesh, living here in the material. That if I pick up an object, they're going to be able to see an object. I pick up a lighter, they're going to be able to see a lighter. And then you got people that are spiritual people, that they're able to see spiritual stuff, something that's not materialistic, right? They're going to be able to, uh, what's there in spirit. Uh, and that's the difference. You know, not that you're not, you can be spiritually gifted. You know, somewhere along those lines, something there is, is blocked. And then there's some people that they do see the things and they're just out trolling. So they say something negative intentionally just to see what you're going to say, what you're going to do. Uh, but that's the way it is, you know, spiritually. Uh, I remember when, uh, when I will go into that area, that my equipment that I would take, uh, cell phones, camcorders, uh, the batteries would go dead real fast. Now that wouldn't even last. Like there was times that when I would take my, my cameras that were fully charged that the batteries would blow up on it or the, the lenses would crack on the camera because whatever was there didn't want to be revealed. Uh, so I went through a lot of phones, uh, and cameras when I used to live in Elms Grove, going into the area, trying to investigate, uh, the activity that I would see coming out of there during the, during the day and night. Uh, but yes, uh, there's a lot of things that, that I witnessed there when I lived there. You know, like I said, I'm glad that I moved out of there. Uh, but uh, of what I seen and what I noticed, it's not just the area. If, if I place myself out there in the line, like for example, right now that I, I got this spiritual encrypted encounter site, I got the positive spiritualist site, um, do podcast, I've come out on the show. You know, I, I'm placing myself out there. And, and what I mean by that is just like I, I placed myself with my story, there's people that 
that are not spiritual. There's people that want to focus on certain things that might come up against me just to try to discredit the the stories that I'm saying. But that's fine because I have an open invitation for all those people. That whether they believe in UFOs, they believe in cryptids, they believe in the supernatural, they believe in uh, demonology, or wherever, wherever it is. You know, I can, I, I, can, I can take them to the area and I can prove to them that whatever is in that area was, is, is in, in, a, in a sense of way demonic. Because I can put it to the test, you know, and I know exactly what to do to overcome it, just like I overcame it when I left. Um, but that's for, and I know there's people that, that are not even here on my, on my spiritual encrypted group. They're not any members that I've met out here that they that want me to take them to the area. And I told them that I would. Uh, it just, I just don't know when. Don't know when yet. Um, but I know when a lot of the activity, there's activity there every day. I know that. Uh, but the activity that I witness when this figures to transformed into into themselves into this werewolf like creatures was around this time frame where it gets cold. You know, and I know it happened between October to December. So we're still within the gap of it getting cold here in Texas that you might be able to witness something uh there. But if it's spiritual, if it's spiritual, right, then you might not be able to find the tracks. You might not be able to find nothing. You might see something, but you might not find nothing in the ground because it's spiritual. Uh, and that's where it lies down to, you know, the, the spiritual. When I talk spiritual, you know, people don't want to hear the, the spiritual aspect out of many things. Uh, I'll give you examples of that, of uh, the spiritual aspect. Uh, one of the ones that I like using was when I was in combat. Right. I've seen a group of people, and this is the day before I went to war. The day before I went into, to fighting the front lines. There was a group of people, and I went up to where the group of people were. I was trying to figure out what was going on. And there was a, uh, and there was a, a chaplain, a chaplain. There was a chaplain, and he was talking to the soldiers, and, they were praying, you know, they were just saying a non-dominational prayer. It wasn't even like a prayer, just a, they were just like a prayer that he made up, you know, and, and he walked away. And then when I looked at the, the people, right, there were non-dominational, which everybody was of different faith and belief. I could see like a big question mark or every single buddy that was there. And I asked them that it, it seems like there's something wrong with them. They said, well, they're like, we don't want to die. You know, we don't want to die. I said, well, I know a way where if we pray to a higher power that we're not, that we're not going to die, that we're going to make it back because God protects his children, you know, especially through prayer. And then there's some people that were there within the group that said, well, I don't believe in, 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 in Jesus. I'm, I'm, a, I'm atheist. I'm this. I'm that. And this, and the other beliefs. I said, well, you, you, you all say, you're telling me that you don't want to die. Well, I'm, I'm letting you know, you know, I mean, are you already get, but you saying I don't want to die. This, this is already saying to me that you're already giving up. So I'm just giving you the, 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 the Reddit, the, the cure. The cure to not wanting to die because I know what God can do. He said, it's not going to hurt you. He said, God's not going to hurt you. He's just going to listen, hear your prayer. So how about we all hold hands and we pray? And what do you got to lose? But to, you know, the only thing you have to do, half of the prayer is gain because you're going to gain to continue to live. So they all looked at me and people hold hands. Nobody walked away from the whole thing. They said, we're here, brothers. They said, we're here. As I looked to my left, I looked to my right. We're all here as brothers and sisters because we're going to fight. 
This is so let's how about we just pray together. Just like we're gonna fight, let's pray together as one. And they all grabbed hands. All these people, some that didn't believe and, and went into prayer. We went into prayer and we call upon the Heavenly Father to protect us, to guide us, and to be there for us on the day of combat. And sure enough, you know, we fought the front lines and we overcame the obstacles that were in front of us. It was more of them than us in the front lines. Uh, normally in combat, uh, brothers and sisters, the first line of defense or offense, right? Defense or offense are the first ones to go, which what I mean to go is the first one to die in combat, in which you have wave after wave after wave behind you. Well, our front line withstood the waves and the waves and the waves of the enemy, in which any anybody behind us didn't have uh, didn't have to fight, and they all survived. And we all survived the front lines. We were just blessed. Uh, like I said, when you're praying, you place God first. A lot of positive things happen. And that's why I continue to do the works that I do uh, and talk spiritually. Uh, faith is belief, right? And not just that, you may have a spiritual connection to the Heavenly Father in which when you pray, He comes and intervenes to whatever you're going through. And at times... As you're spiritually gifted, but being obedient and, and, and having you maintain your faith, you get spiritually blessed through the, the gift of discernment, not just the gift of discernment, with many other blessings. And he comes talks to you in your sleep, or he shows you images of things that he wants you to do spiritually, just like I'm doing right now, talking spiritually. I'm talking to you all spiritually, I have a great... The power of the Heavenly Father is, you know, I can, I can show you the experiences that I've been through, but how I can't ever came all those experiences was through the power of, uh, Jesus Christ. Let me see if, uh, I'm going to see his cousin, uh, Victor anywhere around. We'll send a couple of more invites to see who's here or might be interested. Uh, Okay, but yes, the power of the Heavenly Father is real, brothers and sisters. It's very real. You know, I hear sometimes when some bad things happen to people, they lose a family member or a loved one, and they go against the Heavenly Father, and they want to go to the point of denouncing them, saying that it's his fault because certain things happen, certain events happen. You know, uh, to certain individuals, you know, sometimes that's just life, you know, and we have to go through what life gives us. Uh, but I know one thing that every time I prayed, uh, for him to help me, he's been there for me. When I was in that path, uh, surrounded by those six demonic beastly figures, I call upon the Heavenly Father. He came and assisted. And uh, they acknowledged him by saying the Holy One. They kept on repeating themselves, calling him the Holy One. So I know how great the power of the Heavenly Father is. Um, the, Our, the Our Father, and some, some people call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's also called the Our Father. Uh, the Our Father, uh, it's called, uh, it can be called the Our Father or Our Father. Uh, that prayer right there is, is very powerful prayer. Uh, I used it and every time I use it is is bought nothing but positive results to me uh, in which the Heavenly Father comes and intervene to whatever I'm going through but one time you know I'm gonna share a couple of stories here uh, how great the power of the Heavenly Father is uh, back in 1980 I'll say 85 1985 no 19 1984, 83. I was up in, uh, sent, uh, up in Lubbock, Texas. We used to go work in the fields, in the cotton. So we lived out in the ranch, you know, and the sirens started going off from the town. And we could hear the sirens going off, but we didn't know what was going on. 
So we want to go outside. You could see some dark clouds, some very low clouds. And when we looked, there was two tornadoes. Two tornadoes were coming directly to the ranch. They were coming. It was, they were massive, big, dark tornadoes just sucking everything up. They were coming straight to the ranch. So the ranch had a, a little basement. So I went into the basement of the ranch and we just started praying. You know, I started praying to our father and you could hear where he's making the noise that sounds like, like trains. You know, you could hear that noise and you know, we had a candle in there and, and we were just praying, you know, because we didn't know what was going to happen and they sounded very close, very close. And next thing you know, as we kept on praying to our father, we couldn't hear the, the, the sound of the, the tornado, which was making like a locomotive sound. We couldn't hear it no more. So when we went out there, the tornado had destroyed all the cotton around the ranch and he destroyed, destroyed some of the, the barn where some of the barn, but our house was still intact, you know, because we went into prayer, uh, and we were safe. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, the power of prayer is, 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 is very awesome. It's very great because when you pray, the heaven father will, will bring assistance to you. You know, it's this, uh, you know, the prayer, when you go into prayer, even when you pray within yourself and you go into a situation that's a lot greater than any other kind of assistance that any man can provide because that's assistance directly from the heavenly father, which is, is a lot greater. Than any, any services that any man can provide here on earth. Uh, because that's a heavenly father coming and assisting you, backing you up. You know, uh, he's our protector and he's an avenger. You know, uh, that's, that's what he does. Uh, um, well, who's still with, with here with me? Sister Joanne, you still here right now? Well, I see somebody here, but I don't know who it is. See one, well, see one person here on the live. Uh, but yeah, I'm just making this, I was just making this quick video. Uh, another thing that, you know, I'm going to continue to be posting some pictures, uh, that I have there. I'm trying to work on the pictures to, to make them look better with different, uh, apps. I'm working on some of the pictures. Uh, I guess, there you go. It's Sister Joanne. How you doing, Sister? Yes. Uh, you know, so, uh, I guess what I was trying to say is uh, that I'm still trying to debate when I'm going to do, when I'm going to try to go to a higher platform. But, I, but I'm happy with the platform that I have here right now. That's the thing is that that, you know, for, it's for the members, whoever joins here, and that's why I do this, uh, for the members that are here and for wherever I share to, you know, it touches somebody's heart. That's why I do this, this works. Uh, and that's why I like doing it here. Uh, I just don't know if I want to do it like any other platform like YouTube or StreamYard or Instagram. Uh, like I said, I've, I've been with this group. You know, when I created, the, I had, my groups were, or before the, I recreated them because like I said, uh, my, my account had got it permanently deleted because it was getting reported daily. So I had got it permanently deleted and I had to recreate this account. So it's kind of like, you could say, uh, somebody was trying to eliminate me out of the picture <laughs> in which they tried, but they don't know, they didn't know that I had a backup account. They didn't know that I had all my pictures saved. I lost some of the videos of that I would do the spiritual works when I used to be on live worker life feeds and live workers of the world, and which is, that's okay. Uh, but I had saved all the pictures of all the works that I've done throughout the years in which that's why I redid it and, uh, and I uh, re rebuilt um, my sites, but that's, that's awesome, sister. That's awesome, sister, that you're doing great. That's very awesome. 
I wish we could do a live and we could, uh, I can do a walkthrough, uh, one day, uh, to, 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 to cleanse your home, not unless you already cleansed it. Uh, uh, but one day, you know, this, this, like I said, those are the works that I like to do. It's help out people spiritually, uh, to get rid of negative energies from the home. It's not a good feeling when there's, uh, you're being either infiltrated or you're being spirit, your house or, or your domain is being spiritually attacked. That's not a good feeling, but I know how to get rid of that negative energy that's trying to cause harm, uh, to your household, to your loved ones, you know, and, and basically you take authority over it. You, you bless your home, you bless your loved ones, you bless, uh, the doorways, the windows, the passageways. And you take authority over it without fear. Uh, you don't have to use anger, use love to, to, to scare it away. You're not to scare it away, but to tie by the rebuke, you use, you use a love foundation. Uh, you tie by the rebuke in Jesus name. And that's how you overcome any unclean spirit, uh, that tries to, uh, come into your household or to affect a, a loved one. You tie by the rebuke. Through in Jesus' name, uh, there was a lot of things that I wanted to talk about. You know, I know there's a lot of prayers, a lot of prayers out there. There's prayers to angels. Uh, I think there's a prayer of the Holy Mary, uh, and there's many prayers that people can say. You know, because I believe in the Catholic Church, they have prayers of of every sister or every a prayer for every little thing, but. Besides that, you know, the, the bigger question is, who's the one that makes things happen? Who's the ones that, who's the one that can cast out demons? Who's the one that, that blesses us with the spiritual gifts? And, and, and the answer is simple. It's Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's who I pray to is him. You know, uh, because all these people that have they've been able to do spiritual works is through him. Th that's why they're, they were blessed to have the spiritual gifts, to be able to do the, 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 the things that they did while they were here on earth. Just like as I'm spiritually blessed and there's some of you that are spiritually blessed to be able to do this kind of works is because we're being uh, blessed through him, but be, we're being used to him. To be able to assist others. So really it's him that it gives us the abilities to be able to do the works that we do. So it's kind of like, I don't pray to myself. I don't pray to, to other people that's done spiritual goods, uh, spiritual works. I pray to the, to Jesus Christ because he's the one that can, uh, bless us with spiritual abilities and he's the one that can, takes us, takes away spiritual abilities. You know, it all has to do with the path that we're on. That's why I focus on Him, you know, place Him first to the best of my ability since I'm here in the flesh, uh, living amongst the living. You know, it's hard, you know, when we're caught up here. Imagine if it was hard for us. If it's hard for us that we're here living, imagine Him uh, as, as Jesus Christ, God, and coming here as as the son of God, you know, even though he was Jesus, uh, he couldn't hide. Uh, he couldn't hide from, I should have say, the spiritual aspect of things because they knew who he was. The, the legion knew who he was, that he was the son of God or God, that he had the ability to, to cast them out, to send them into the depths of hell, even they knew, you know, just like the ones in the woods between the hours of three and four, that they acknowledge him as the Holy One, which was the legion, right? Demonic. They knew who he was when I was saying to our father, and he, and he came to assist me from the situation, right? I believe the heavenly father and his angels were around me when I called upon him and they came to assist me. So when they acknowledged him, acknowledged him, they were saying the Holy One, 
is because they knew that his presence was there, the case, that he came to assist me to get out of the situation I was in, that that I had the direct connection to him, that he came to assist me, so he was acknowledging me as the Holy One, that or that they knew that I was a a, a person of faith, that, that, I, that I do believe in Jesus Christ 100%, and they were acknowledging the presence, the connection, the love. They were connecting all that, and they were, they were acknowledging as the Holy One. They kept on repeating themselves uh, as the Holy One. Uh, but those are the works that I do, brothers and sisters. Uh, one day, you know, as time goes by, and you continue to maintain your love foundation, uh, continue to use your spirit, your spiritual gifts of the sermon and assist people spiritually. Uh, you're gonna learn, you learn from every, every spiritual battle or encounter or crossing a path with people that is spiritual guide, spiritual assistance. You're gonna learn from all that to make you the person that you are right now or that you're gonna be later on in the future. All that will will come in due time. Uh, see, Sister Joan says, Yes, brother, after your prayers with Victor, the next day I woke up feeling so wonderful. It's hard to explain, but you might understand. I will take a deep breath and you feel comforting. Yes, sister. Well, what happened is we went into prayer and we did the prayers that we did and to cleanse your home. The negativity that was invading your your foundation left because you took authority. We went into prayer and took authority. We tied by the river and got it out of your household. So that's why you were able to breath because there was nothing there to stop you from feeling comfortable, from feeling peaceful, from feeling safe. And that's the atmosphere that came. You know, I've been to places, Sister Joanne, where I've gone in there and it's, the, the household is so dark. Even though there's daylight out there, it's so dark in, in the household where these unclean spirits are hiding that it, 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 it feels sadness, darkness, and in certain locations it's real dark. But once I go in there and I do the works that I do spiritually, uh, bless the home, bless the people to protect them, place the heavenly crosses and I pray, tie by the rebuke the negative energies that are infiltrated within the household and I get rid of them the household is not dark no more like it was it becomes lighter you could actually see through the windows you could see the light coming in from from the outside inside your inside the house you know it's it's an amazing feeling when when you the heavenly father comes in and and cleanses your home and get rid of the negative energy uh, that feeling is awesome. Uh, a feeling, of, like you said, of, of comfort, of peace, of, of being protected. You, that's the number one. That's all you feel. You, you feel the presence of the, the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Angels that they came and swept your, swept your house. So it's an amazing feeling, uh, when that happens, sister. Uh, a very, so, so much of an amazing feeling that when you go to sleep, you're going to get the best rest that you've ever gotten because, there's nothing there to interfere uh, in your sleep, or you just it feels so so awesome, an awesome feeling. But anyways, I didn't want to make it too long of a video, so uh, so people could view it. Uh, let me see how long I've been on here. I've been on here for. Well, I really don't say. I guess I can, I can finish off this video with a prayer. That's what I'm going to do. Finish off with a prayer. Heavenly Father, at this time, I'd like to pray for myself, my brothers and sisters, or for anybody that's going to view this video. Uh, I would like to pray for people to maintain a love foundation daily. For them to focus on their love foundation, regardless of any obstacles that might come the way, uh, for them to, to focus on the love foundation, even there, if there's a negative spiritual or negative physical presence in front of them, uh, for them to maintain the love foundation when they're going through that 
and to use love to overcome uh, the spiritual and whatever uh, obstacle comes away through that love foundation. For them to practice that daily, uh, for them not to continue to have faith with you, and for them not to fear, because you have everything under control, Heavenly Father. Uh, and for people that, I pray for the people that, that see the energy, they want to focus on the negative energy. I pray for those individuals that just want to focus on negative energy because they think, they might think it has some kind of power or they might have been offered something in some kind of way. No, I want, I want to pray for these individuals that have made deals or packs in some kind of way or where they think that they have some kind of power because of something negative that might have happened to them. I want to pray for them, for them, Heavenly Father, if there has been anything promised to them through negativity, we tie, bind, and break any negative promises or negative ties to these individuals. And for them to understand, for them to awaken, and to understand that whatever the name they promises is not good, that it's a false promise, and that he only want, only wants one thing. He wants to to stop him uh, from entering God's kingdom. I pray for these individuals. I pray for the sick uh, or anybody that's being spiritually bonded or attacked that are ill right now. We 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 pray for you, Heavenly Father, to send your heavenly angels to every hospital, to every location where there's somebody sick or might be suffering in any kind of way of through hunger, uh, through sicknesses. We tie, bind, and rebuke. Any negative energy is causing this. In Jesus' name, we tie, bind, and rebuke them. For these people that are hungry, for them to be blessed with food, uh, for any of the people that are suffering right now in hospitals uh, through this, through any kind of disease or man-made diseases that are set up to make you see it. We tie bind and rebuke that in Jesus' name. And for anybody that's sick to be healed miraculously by your Heavenly Father. This I pray in your name. Amen. Thank you, Sister Jan, uh, for tuning in. I was thinking about you and I uh, decided to make this video uh, today because I know you're another side of the world. So I made this video for you and for whoever views from the other side of the world that I haven't, I haven't done one in a while during the day. Um, uh, but I know that y'all always watch the replay anyways. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, God bless you and your family. And I was Matilda Love Foundation, Sister Joanne. You have a beautiful, blessed evening. Good morning or afternoon, whatever time it is where you're at. Thank you.